Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about the exile. The, the people of God are exiled into the Babylonian Empire, which later was conquered by the Persian Empire. And so uh, now we've been talking about how the exiled people of God have returned to Jerusalem. And they returned in three groups. They went into exile in three waves, and they returned in three waves. Uh, the first group Return, uh, first group of 50,000 exiles returned from Babylon under Zerubbabel, uh, the new uh, Babylonian governor, uh, of, or the new Persian governor, I should say, of Jerusalem. The second group of exiles returned under Ezra the priest. And then the third and final group of exiles returned under Nehemiah, who desired to rebuild the walls around Jerusalem. When Nehemiah arrived, he and Ezra, particularly uh, Nehemiah being the, the governor, the political leader, and Ezra being the, the priest, the spiritual leader, were encountered with a problem. The people that they were dealing with had no idea what it meant to be the people of God. They had no history, they had no background, they had no context, they had no learning, uh, they hadn't even heard the law of Moses they didn't know any of the, the ritual practices that were, they were supposed to be doing. They didn't have a clue what they were doing and hadn't had a clue for generations. And so uh, Ezra and Nehemiah called the people together in a, in a, um, in a big meeting, right? all the people at once, and they read the Word of God. And so the exiled people hear the Word of God read. And it had been 140 years, 140 years had passed since God's people has, had assembled as a nation united. It had been 140 years since they had had church, basically is what I'm telling you. It had been 140 years since they had had church, since they had gathered to hear the word of God, to be the people of God. Ezra read the scriptures, the Levites, the the tribe of Levi, who were responsible for maintaining the temple, interpreted it, uh, not just because the people couldn't, uh, needed it interpreted, but because they didn't understand Hebrew, uh, that, and so they had to be translated. Uh, and the people understood it and obeyed it. That's the commitment the people made, is they realized that this is what it means to be the people of God, and we want to be the people of God. And so they committed this, themselves to obeying God's word that was now being refreshed, renewed to them. And then the people begin to rebuild the walls. Um, the people were in Jerusalem, the temple had been rebuilt, but the walls hadn't been rebuilt. Um, and that is to tell us that the people of God need good boundaries in order to remain the people of God. And when I say boundaries, I, I'm, I'm distinguishing those from barriers. Uh, we shouldn't put barriers up between ourselves and other people. But we do need boundaries. We do need to know where we end and where other people begin because boundaries help us to be who we are and to know who we are and to be God's people. Those, those, bar those uh, boundaries, those walls, those spiritual walls, those emotional walls are given to us in the Word of God. They're God's laws that God has given us to distinguish ourselves from other people and to let us know what the boundaries of our own behavior are, and they're there to protect us. Like the walls of Jerusalem were there to protect Jerusalem, God's laws are there to protect us, to keep us safe, to keep us in bounds, to keep us in bounds and to keep us away from those things that would harm us. Proverbs 25, 28 says that a person without self-control is like a city 
with broken down walls. See, in, in this culture, if your city didn't have walls around it, that was like not having doors on your house, right? People would just come in and help themselves to your stuff. You needed walls to protect you from, from marauders, and we need spiritual walls to protect us from things that harm us. We need, and God has given those to us in his word. The purpose of this series, the story, is the same. People need to hear the word to understand it and to obey it because it becomes our boundaries as the people of God. It lets us know who we are and protects us from the things that would harm us. The purpose is that you would learn the story and be able to communicate it to others. And really, you can do the whole Bible in three minutes or less. Here's the story of the Bible. God, the community of the Trinity, wants to be in community, in relationship with human beings. God has created us because He wants to be in relationship with us. God wants us. That's why He made us. He wouldn't have made us if He didn't want us. Uh, But there's a problem. Sin entered the human spiritual DNA and destroyed the community, the relationship people have with God and with one another. Now, so far, I'm, I'm at Genesis chapter 3. That's all the farther I've gotten into the Bible. We're three chapters into the Bible, and, and the thing has already gone off the rails. The whole rest of the Bible, the whole rest of the Bible is the story about God winning us back to himself. Beginning with Abraham and this nation of Israel and continuing with Jesus Christ and the church. And the reason I say this here is because this is is where we leave the Old Testament. This is the last chapter in the Old Testament story. And since we already did chapter 22 at Christmas time, we're going to jump next week to chapter 23. So, be reading chapter 23 for next week. God's Word is a wall. God's Word is a wall, a boundary, a protection for us that keeps us in the community of the people of God and keeps out those things which would harm us. Now, people can get in because there's a gate. That gate's Jesus Christ. But the wall's protect us. The walls keep us safe. Many people's lives have broken down walls. Many people have have allowed others into their lives that harm them. Many people have allowed behaviors into their lives that harm them. People need to rebuild those walls. And today, brothers and sisters, is all about rebuilding the walls.